morning scripture is from Mark 10. Mark 10, beginning at verse 2. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing the little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant indignant, and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. A fellow clergy in another state said that he was going to skip this reading. He was going to focus on, in on the Jesus blessing the little children part because he himself is divorced and remarried and his concern was that the people listening to him knowing this would focus on nothing else except, oh, this person who's talking about divorce is divorced and remarried, like he's got some kind of scarlet D on his forehead or something. He just didn't know how he could handle it. And that is sometimes something that people feel. They, people are wounded and don't want to bleed on the congregation that they're speaking to. Or they're still ashamed or they feel guilt about it. And they haven't come to a sense of resolution themselves. When I was 11, in sixth grade, I started a program on the 1st of January where I was trying to read through the Bible in a year. And to do that, the, the plan was that you would read two or three or four chapters of the Old Testament a day, and then one chapter of the New Testament. And I was not very far into this effort. When I came to Matthew's version of this story, Matthew's version of this teaching of Jesus, and I was brought up short. Because... In the year that had just preceded, my parents had separated, gotten divorced, and my father had remarried. And here it is. It sounds like Jesus was saying something bad about my parents. And I would say that that experience, that, that particular time in my life, is when I started to become a theologian. 
when I started trying to understand meanings of words about God. I had heard people talking about God. I had heard words about God. I had spoken, probably, some words about God. But I hadn't really started to kind of dig into their meaning and dig into the meaning of something from Scripture, something that challenged me or spoke, seemed to be speaking directly to to my situation, to saying, saying something about my parents, saying something about my family. What does this mean? Well, one thing that we can notice about it is that it's a test. The people asking the question are testing Jesus. They are not just asking for pastoral insight. There is a live topic of discussion and gossip about the royal household, or at least the sort of royal household. Herod Antipas, the the ruler of Galilee, has gone to a dinner at his brother Philip's house, and he's decided that he likes Philip's wife. And he's taken Philip's wife from him and taking, taken her to his palace. This was a subject of discussion. And John the Baptist had been very clear. This is unlawful. This is not to be done. He had spoken up about it. He had talking, talked about not using a person as disposable. And in speaking up about it, he had come to Herod's attention and been arrested and eventually been executed by those wishing to stop being reminded of what's happened. People have experienced divorce. It's something the church has struggled. It's something the church has dealt with over the millennia. They are looking at this story, looking at these words of Jesus, and finding in it law. That there is a new and harsher or new and stricter law that Jesus has pronounced. Moses allowed it. And one way of looking at it is saying, Moses may have allowed it, but Jesus doesn't. And we have codified that into church law and sometimes into civil law. And people are feeling ashamed, are guilty, because they didn't measure up. Because something, and sometimes people are kept from church, thought they think they can't come. They're sometimes told they can't come or they're not fully welcome. And one thing to notice about this is that the people asking the question, asking if it's lawful, are not people who are supporters of Jesus. They're people looking to find Jesus saying something and trying to hang on him the one position that will cause others to dislike him or disagree with him and maybe even get Herod's attention on him. It's not a friendly question. There were two schools of thought in Jesus' time. There was 
a party that said Moses allows a man, it was always a man who made the decision, Moses allows a man to divorce his wife if he finds something displeasing in her. And displeasing could be she burned his dinner. Displeasing could be like what Herod did. I like found somebody I like better. And others were stricter. Said only for unchastity. And if a woman is sent away from her husband's house, she's in bad shape. To be married, there had been a negotiation of property transfer. The woman was the property of her father and then becomes the property of her husband. And things of value had been exchanged. And if the husband kicks her out of the house, she may not be able to go back to her father's house. She may have to prostitute herself to survive. Jesus doesn't find this acceptable. He focuses not on what the law allows, but on what God intends. God has created us, he says, for relationship. God has created us for community. God has created us for the upbuilding of one another. And if we throw that away, we're throwing away something that is a gift of God. And even now, the economic consequences of divorce can be significant. At the same time I was reading this teaching of Jesus, we were collecting soft drink bottles to buy food. Our economic circumstances were greatly reduced by the divorce. And then Mark puts that story with a story about Jesus' blessing of children. And for sure, children can certainly be, are impacted by divorce. They're impacted emotionally. Our father was living away from us, living in another state. It was by his choice, but he wasn't living with us and he wasn't nearby. We wondered if it was our fault. A couple of times my brother told me it was my fault. He was wrong. And he knew he was wrong, or at least he does now. But people think it's the children are affected financially, emotionally. They're affected in wondering about their own relationships. And Jesus says, we receive the kingdom like a child receives. A, a child can't earn it. A child has to receive it as a gift of God. What our standing, our place in the world, our place in God's world is based on the grace of God that we are not the worst thing we've ever done. We're not the worst thing that's ever happened to us. God's intention, Jesus' intention is to bring us into relationship with God, to Hold up community. We need to take our relationship seriously, our commitment seriously. But beyond, above it all is God's great intention. God's intention, God's purpose is to give us the kingdom. And like a child, we receive it.